Welcome to Garden Wise Adventures. My name is Malie and it's a little bit stormy and a little bit windy and hopefully the light is okay. But I wanted to do a short video because we just had a couple of nights of a deep freeze. You know, it's early spring, it's in the middle of April and we had nights that hit the low 20s. Now I had my peach trees that are right behind me in full glorious bloom just before that freeze. My cherry trees, my plum trees were almost done blooming. And I wanted to show you what survived the freeze and what didn't and talk to you a little bit about what you can do to help protect your plants if you're going to have a late spring freeze. So let me show you the peach trees first. Now these are my glorious peach trees. We've got an O'Henry right here, a lemon Alberta over here, and then we've got my nectarine over here. Now these peaches had just started blooming. They'd, they blooms were almost completely open when the freeze hit. And I don't know if you can see very well, but we have had some damage. Let me pull this bud off and show it to you. Let's see if I can get it to focus. Turn it this way. There we go. So this was a damaged bloom. Now, if it had had time to form a peach, Inside here, you would see a brown little peach, but it didn't have time to start forming anything before the freeze hit. Now, there are some blossoms that opened, like this one right here, after the freeze happened. They're looking okay, but we're gonna to have to wait a little while and see if they survived. I don't think any of the ones on this branch survived at all, but we're just gonna wait and see what happens. Now my nectarine here seems to always have more damage. Sorry about the camera not focusing very well. It ends up having more damage when we have cold winds come through. I'm not sure exactly what the reason is, but maybe it's just a little bit more sensitive. So I am a little worried that I'm not going to see any nectarines at all. These right here are the most exposed branches all the way up here and they seem to have the most damage. Now I'll post a link down at the bottom that's from Utah State University that talks a little bit about what temperatures buds are damaged for different kinds of trees. Now I think it's 28 degrees when peaches are fully opened where they get 90% of the fruit damaged. So what can you do to protect your trees if you're going if they're in bed and they're if they're in full bloom and there's going to be a freeze now if your trees are small enough you can definitely try and cover them with a tarp professional orchardists use what what are called smudged pots and they are basically kind of little for the lack of a better word kind of like a a bonfire in a in a tube <laughs> but anyway they provide heat that can rise under the trees and raise the temperature a few degrees. Um, you can use fans that mix the air. Hot air rises, cool air sinks. You can mix the air a little bit and help mitigate the temperatures a little bit. The one thing that does not work in cold climates like ours that they talk about in California is spraying your trees and letting them freeze. That does not work here because the humidity isn't high enough and the temperatures freeze for a lot longer periods of time than they do in California and Florida. Another thing you can do to help protect them is put them in a protected area. If you, ha if you live in, area, in an area that has random late, freeze, late spring freezes and you want fruit trees, find an area in your yard that has a warmer microclimate. That's an area where the temperatures just con consistently stay warmer, maybe up against the south side of a house. Now you can look at your property and understand where those microclimates are by figuring out where the snow melts first and where the snow stays the longest. The places where the snow stays the longest are the colder areas. That might also be a good place to put your fruit trees, especially flowering peaches. The colder area will not damage the tree. It might help the trees form their buds later in the spring where they miss the late spring frosts. So let's look at my cherry tree now and see how that fared. So right here we have my cherry tree. It's in full bloom. 
it was in full bloom when the when the freeze hit and we definitely have some damage to the blooms I'm not sure how many of the cherries we're gonna lose we're just gonna have to wait and see but it's still really pretty this tree produces tons of cherries so I'm not too worried if we get a few that'll be great quite worried about my plum tree Usually when the buds are this stage, uh, it's not focusing again, but usually when the buds are this stage, let me see if I can get it to focus on these buds. There we go. Usually when the buds are this stage, I can squeeze them really gently and fill a little hard fruit inside of them, but there is nothing there right now. So I am worried that all of the buds on my plum tree were were taken out but we'll just have to see now let's look at my garden beds I just planted my onions and I delayed planting the onions until after the freeze so that we can avoid having them bolt or the possibility of them bolting we don't have any more below freezing temperatures coming up in the near future so hopefully these will be okay the one thing that they're not okay from is the silly little quail that come and dig in this bed. Hopefully they leave it alone. They have dug up that corner over there, but the rest of it is okay. Now the chichimisai and the kale right here were planted outside. You know, these are the ones that I was harvesting off and growing in, indoors and I didn't have a place to put them. So I put them here. As you can see, they did suffer some cold damage but it didn't kill them. They're very, very hardy. The kohlrabi was uncovered and undamaged. It looks really good right now. The new cauliflower did suffer some damage, but not enough to kill it, I don't think. So it's, these will grow and be fine, but the mature cauliflower looks absolutely gorgeous they're doing well and as you can see in here we have a lot of volunteer lettuce and the lettuce did absolutely fine this garlic has been out all winter and has suffered temperatures far below the low 20s and garlic is extremely hardy it does really well grapevines the only time a grapevine would be damaged in cold weather is if it had already budded out and had had new leaves and what happens is it will kill the you know if you do have leaves that are already out and growing and you get a freeze it will kill the leaves but then it will rebed out that does if you have repeated years where it does that it will weaken the grapevine um, these have had that happen several times but not consecutively so these vines have done quite well The cabbages were covered by this frost cloth and did not suffer any damage, so they are okay. The chijimisai and spinach and, and chard were tucked nicely into my little hoop house and suffered zero damage. They're doing really well. I forgot to show you this little chard. This cute little chard was planted out last winter and has been uncovered the entire season since, since last fall. And it is coming back and doing quite well. So this, this one has been very hardy. The new little lettuce and all my peas, they went through the frost and did just fine as did the raspberries. Raspberries are extremely hardy. They received no damage whatsoever, and I just came through and pruned those this morning. The apples were just fine. It did not get cold enough to damage their buds. They were f are further behind than the peaches. And I think the same thing happened with the pears. Although, yeah, this one might be okay. This one seems like it is looking a little odd to me but I think it's okay actually so I don't think the pears were damaged the apples were definitely not damaged 
Look at the little buds that we got on there. Aren't those gorgeous? And all of my last years that I planted last fall's veggies, they received this was I left this open. They received absolutely no damage. The leaves were frozen solid when I came outside that morning, you know, after the freeze. And the next day, everything was really quite limp after freezing, but now they've rebounded and are absolutely normal. My beautiful little golden currants are in full bloom, and they were in full bloom during the freeze and received absolutely no damage. These are extremely hardy. This is on the north side of the building, so it was the coldest here and stayed the coldest here longest. So they are absolutely fine. And here's another shock. This, the cold storm that came through had 50 mile an hour winds and it was below freezing. And I received no damage in the screen stock. And look how gorgeous they are. The lettuce is absolutely fine. No cold damage whatsoever. Strawberries, no cold damage. Matter of fact, we're probably gonna have to pull this off because it's brand new, newly planted. No damage, except for the uh, except for the snapdragons that died earlier. So I'm really happy with this. If you put it, if you put your veggies in a protected spot, you know, especially these cold tolerant ones like the lettuces and the kales and and the pansies, strawberries and stuff like that, they are so hardy. They definitely don't have problems. Another one that is hardy that really will not have problems in cold freezing weather, even if it snows on them, are all the daffodils. I think they're absolutely gorgeous. The snapdragons that I planted out front are looking a little sad, but they're still alive. They survived the cold too. Now there are things out here that would not survive the cold damage that I did actually cover. Uh, one of which is all of my figs. I have several different figs and those were covered in plastic and just wrapped up and I and they survived beautifully. And I wanted to go show you in just a minute my Chicago Hardy in the front. I had to cover up my parf my cute little parfienka pomegranate. It was brand newly plant it was newly planted and I don't think it would have tolerated the cold. It is alive, but that's what I covered it with. Let's go show you my Chicago hardy fig and what's on it. The desert king fig was covered up with the insulation over there and some plastic and it survived. It's not pushed out any new growth yet. Well, actually it's just starting over here. You can see the new little growth coming up on it. But let me show you my Chicago hardy fig. This one's been extra protected. And if you look right here, it's kind of hard to tell, but I have little baby figs. Here's one that you can see right here. That is a fig. So last year I did not get any figs until starting in January. And it was really sad because they, they didn't have time to ripen. Let me see if you can see this one right here. So if you can see these down here, these are my little tiny Braba crop and they will definitely have time to ripen. This is my pistachio. Up here is this one. But it was almost bedded out and it actually survived. It's doing just fine. So it's cold tolerant also. Now the saddest thing for me is my little pawpaw buds. These were almost open. Some of them feel okay, but like this one right here, that was definitely lost. So I lost quite a few of my open pawpaw buds. These were open and they're not doing well. Yeah, that one's dead. Oh, that one was alive. Okay, I'll stop messing with it. But I did lose quite a few pawpaw buds. Now I know there's still the possibility of more freezes coming. You know, the climate, especially here in Utah, you just never know what's going to happen. But we'll just take it day by day. The things that we can protect, we will protect. The ones that we can't protect, we'll just hope for the best. Now I'd love to hear if your property does get late spring frost, what you do to protect your fruit trees. Well, I hope this video was helpful. If it was helpful, please like and subscribe, share it with your friends, and go have a wonderful garden adventure.